Well, I feel in a Swedish mood today. Oh, no. Please. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to bring a little. You're the Meryl Streep of cooking. <laughs> <laughs> what does it those, mean? All of those accents. What does it mean? The Meryl Streep. <laughs> well, she's famous for all her accent oh, roles. Oh, is she really? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Oh my goodness, we're we're doing Swedish uh, recipes today. Yes, I ha am doing uh, Swedish meatballs, <laughs> which I think have been done and done until there's just nothing else to do with them. But I'm going to attempt to bring them back to life one more time. And I can tell you that this comes from someone who does never touches a Swedish meatball at a party. Because <laughs> I think it's the most tired food in the world. Well, may, may, it's just because they're overdone. You're right. They it's are. like frying chicken they're is overdone. in the South. Every time they have a party here, Swedish meatballs, mm -hmm. you know, and that you see them out here on the backyard playing golf with them <laughs> next week because <laughs> they're so tough. And I'm doing a, a Swedish salad that I think sounds absolutely wonderful. I can't waste. Wait. Can't to, waste. I can't wait to get my tooth into it. <laughs> can't wait but to I can see wasted. I can see this gag around here gagging and, and barfing oh, in the background. I've heard a little something about what you're gonna be putting in yes. it. Yeah. But I'm not gonna tip uh, no, the no. people off out there. Because we want to hear the floor crew uh, uh, go uh, uh, and moan in the background. They're on more than we are anymore. I've noticed mm -hmm. well, <laughs> I believe they're using those mics are, back there and not ours. <laughs> they are funnier than we are sometimes. <laughs> Most of the time they we should got, be up here, we should be back there. We got a card that just came in. Hey, uh, we got tons of letter just came in. <laughs> no, no, they brought this one in. It has a little poem on it. This is from Withville, Virginia. All right. TV's getting rotten. Yeah. Some show's not worth a peep. Right. There's only one I try never to miss, and that one's cooking cheap. Oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, oh, is that uh, it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, Just a little, that's po uh, a little poem. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Who uh, uh, can we? Uh, it did, doesn't say. It just says a from friend in Withville. A friend well, in Withville. Thank you so much. We love all of our friends in Withville and all the way around in the right. area. Everybody. Hey, incidentally, mm. uh, instead of a tip. Mm. Even people in Bedford. Yeah. <laughs> we like them. What? No, we it's, love them all. Yes, we do. Every one of them. Uh, most all of them. I know some people in Bedford I'm not fond of. <laughs> Come to think of, there's a one person or two. in Benton they, one they used time to be, I didn't like too well They used either. to be kid to me. Well, we're thinking about it. Well, okay, anyway, uh, today I, my recipe requires uh, pound measurements rather than volume measurements, so I brought my kitchen scale, and that's one that if you can afford uh, as you uh, build up your kitchens, that's something no good kitchen should be without, is a scale so that you can measure things. Are you kidding accurate. me? Sure. I've been swinging around my kitchen 15 years, never had the first scale. Yeah, and that's why all those people laying outside your house. In the, in <laughs> oh, the, there was a fish scale one time, <laughs> but there was nothing. Not, no, no, it's just a, a good scale is just like a good measuring cup. If really? You, if you're going to do it, now you know me, and you're the same way, uh, I always, when I'm trying a new recipe, I always Very follow careful. the directions yes. carefully. Then the second time, I punt. Mm -hmm. I do it the way I want to. But uh, a good scale is important, and especially if you are a fatty waddy like I am, and you can only have so much of something if you're on one of those diets. I don't believe I have ever known you to have so much of something. <laughs> Too much of something, perhaps so much of something, never. <laughs> And he's a good friend of mine. I can see but yeah, before he whacks he me upside the head with a dish, I'm, I'm going to go over on the set. I, my recipe is takes so long that we may have to butt two shows together and come back next week and do the rest. <laughs> Swedish meatballs are definitely not quick party food. I want to tell you well, right what are now. They? Lord, my garments won't stay up. I, I've lost so much weight. My Oh, give us a break. What well, it amounts to is it the <laughs> belt comes way under here. Now, I've wait a minute. I'm tall. It. Look at that. Look well, I'm not as skinny as I was when I started the show six years ago, <laughs> but hey. I'm a... You're not as skinny as you were when we started an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I've taken on water. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Get out your fluid pills. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, I'm going to, I'll just start fooling around while Larry's finding a spoon. I've got some cold <laughs> roast beef, and I'm going to dice up a quarter pound of it. So, Larry, it's all yours. Okay, well, the first thing I've done is I have soaked some old bread in milk. 
you saw this trick you used last week, and here it is again. The only thing was, I couldn't find any other brand, so I used, looks like a pair of shoes. But these are old uh, <laughs> wiener buns. Well, it's a good Swedish word, wiener uh -huh. buns. And as you can see, now I'm gonna have to wring them things out after a while, all right? Well, first oh, well, good. good, you learned how to do that last week. We're gonna start with a nice big bowl here. And we're going to have three different kinds of meats. And I had these all, each of these three kinds of meat, uh, had them ground up fresh yesterday. Well, my, my Kroger uh, meat man, and he says, why don't you just let me grind it all together? And I says, no, I'm doing this for a recipe. And then he figured out who I was, and we got three different mm -hmm. kinds. Now what we have is we, we start out with a half a pound each of ground beef, ground veal, and ground pork. Half a pound each. Isn't it pretty? All packaged mm -hmm. up there. And look at that, it's gorgeous, just gorgeous. Put that in there, and it's got a good color to it. And I could have at least unwrapped them. Little burger, little ground beef, real good. And a little veal, that's the pork in there. All right. Now, prior to going on the air, and you start out with a fairly big bowl, it should be even bigger than this. I'm used to working on a great big uh, aluminum one that I have. Now what we've done here is we've taken a couple of tablespoons of onion and we have fried them things in a little bit of margarine on top of the stove and we're gonna add that in there. All right, and we're gonna add uh, uh, we're going to add two eggs to this. Oh, dear Lord, I have spilled half of the fine consomme that I stayed up all night making. <laughs> uh, two eggs go in there. One little eggy. Two little eggies. And now comes the best part. <laughs> the next thing that you have to do is roll up your sleeves. Make sure your hands are real clean. Take off all your jewelry. <laughs> oh, you're not going to throw that up in our face <laughs> again, are you? <laughs> and get in there with your hands and start squishing it all around. That is the only way known to man. And be very careful while you're doing this because if you squish this stuff up too much, you'll make the consistency of the meat. You'll squash out all of the air. Oh. And you'll make the consistency of the meat so that this stuff will be so leaden that you will simply not believe. So what we're mixing up here is two eggs, three kinds of meat, and the onions. And we're gonna mix those around. And now as long as you've got your hands all messed up, and I do. Now that should be a pretty good mix. Yeah. Now, as long as you got your hands all messed up, what you got to do at this point is to get, <laughs> learn to work with your elbows. Uh, take your bread, a couple of slices of bread, which has been in the milk, and you saw Laban do this last week, and take that and wring it out Two weeks ago, it was, you saw. That seems like just a few minutes ago. <laughs> you add that to the meat. Two slices of bread. And it'd be a good idea to sort of do that. Now, normally you'd just have normal size loaves, I mean, uh, pieces of bread. In this case, we have these silly things. It's the best I can do. But that's all I had left over. All right. And again, take that and Mmm, doesn't that look good? Now you know why I like Swedish meatballs so much. And again, get in there with your hands, jump in there, and mix that all around. Whoops, <laughs> flopped a little over on the other area here. And mix that all around real good. And in a couple of minutes, we'll come back to this mess and I'll add salt and pepper and some of the other things. <laughs> oh, come on, we have such a our people here oh. just doesn't take much to put them off, does it? No, it doesn't. So anyway, Laban, uh, would you give me, uh, no, I'm just joking. 
No, I wouldn't, uh, to be perfectly honest. Now, I'm going to clean, I'm going to clean my hands up here just a little bit, and, and we'll On be right something back. something or another. Now to leave. While, while you're doing that, now, here's my quarter pound of uh, roast beef that's been diced up real nice in my pan. And now I've got a quarter pound of red skin potato. That's a nice waxy potato that will do well in a salad, which this is going to be. And that goes over in with the roast beef. And I've got all of that wonderful potato now. Now I'm going to do some apple. And this is a Granny Smith. Oh, I hate it when little stickers tells where it's been. And uh, I'm going to chop up, and let's weigh it first and see how much this, okay. After I core it, that'll be one apple will be enough to give me a quarter pound of chopped apple. And I have some assiduated water over here. What is that? Situation water? Assiduated. Oh. That's uh, water with lemon juice or vinegar in it to put the apple in so the apple doesn't uh, huh. get nasty because we don't want to have the nasty parts. Let's get nasty. Boy, this Paprika. big Paprika. All right, I turned the heat up on your pan. Did I need to do that? I certainly hope so. Yeah, I got to get that stuff okay. hot. <laughs> now, I'm just going to I think I overdid the paprika. Put by. this apple mm. down in here as I go. Mm, and then the next thing is going to be some uh, pickled beets that go into this salad. And this used to make people go, ooh, pickled beets, but they're so big on salad bars these days that I think people have gotten used to the taste of pickled beets. What are you doing now? Well, I'm getting some of the stuff that goes into the meat. I've just taken a little parsley and chopped it up. It calls for three tablespoons mm -hmm. and one and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Get in there. And uh, so I've never done this recipe before. <laughs> Half of a teaspoon of grated lemon rind, and I'm doing the lemon rind right now. I'm grating that up. Okay. Put that in there. As long well, as I'm here, I may as well go with it. Yeah, I'll just tell you what's go fine. right on. I'm getting I'm just down to the water you know, on it. See? Doing, uh, Stick all that in there. So you salt, a little paprika. That is not. That is supposed to be a little paprika, and I like dumped half a tub in there. Oh, where does that paprika come from? Oh, it's just from all over. Let me get some of this off of there. See, the best part of the stuff sticks to that. That's the only thing I don't like about using a grater. I don't know why they call it a grater. There ain't nothing great about it. Have you ever noticed? There we go. That's sort of loosen that stuff up there a little bit. Put that in there. What else goes in? Now, what you're doing while you're doing that now is you're heating up that margarine that you had left over here because you're going to have to Put these in a little margarine, it's in your lemon rind. Oh, a little lemon juice. We'll just put a little juice in there. There we go. Be real careful with it. Uh, a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And uh, the fl well, we'll do the rest of it here in a minute. Now what we gotta do is we're going to mix that all in there real good. I'm going to use a spoon this time because I'll be honest with you, I'm tired of this. I'm just going to mix that around in there. You can mix it with a spoon at this point because it's it's malleable. It's what? <laughs> is you that put a right? malabar in is it. Is that the right word? <laughs> did I use that word properly? I think you did. Malleable. <laughs> I very seldom ever use an untested word in this kitchen, <laughs> but <laughs> I thought it was right, but I wasn't For fear sure. somebody will lay you out about <laughs> no. it. And well, who that would be. has such a command of the English language that I have to be real careful. He uses assiduated, and I thought if he could use assiduated, I'd use malleable. <laughs> See, that's real workable there. And be real careful, Oh, is that way. what that means? Be real careful when you're doing the Worcestershire sauce because it gets all over your recipe and you can't read the thing. Now, you shape these things into little balls <laughs> and you brown them on the outside of the margarine. That's too big. That's too big. <laughs> yeah. All right, a little about that big. See? Put them down in there. Ooh, they're frying. Listen to them. All right. Eek. Just... Little bitty ones, you don't want to get them too big now because you don't want no one at your party, no one, no one, you don't want anyone at your party choking on these things. 
And now you're just going to fry them lately on the outside. Look at them. Aren't they pretty? And you don't squish them too much when you put them together. Leave them a little light and airy, all right? You remember light and airy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to continue doing that for a couple of minutes back to leaving. All right, now I've just added my quarter pound of Granny Smith and choked on one, but it was real good. I heard you choking. Ugh. This doggone stove, I am miserable Now here are some it. pickled beets, and I've got to have a quarter pound of these. Everything's running to the side. And these are real pretty in red. Oh boy, they're pretty. Probably have red dye number two in them, I don't know. Wouldn't be the first time we eat that on mm -hmm. this set. Whoops. But at least when you go that way, you'll have good color. All right. Now, <laughs> now there's a quarter pound of pick, pickled beets. I saw them, uh, they were weighing the baby on that thing before we got on the set. Uh-huh. And you need a tablespoon of chopped pickle. There that goes. And a tablespoon of capers, which I cannot get open. Mm. Now let's see if we can get these capers. Capers are not easy to find. We pride ourselves on this program of having things that you can easily find, and I must say that capers are not the easiest thing to find anymore. There's a tablespoon of capers. Oh, enough of this. I've had it. I'm tired of it. And we're going to put in some chopped chervil. Sprinkle that around and a little bit of chopped tarragon, and it would be better if you could find the fresh herbs to use instead of the dried. Whoops, just a little bit oh, too dear. much. Oh dear heavens. What's These wrong? These things are going big time. Oh good. These are getting brown on, now you want to look at these. Look at him. Look at them. They're getting real brown on the sides, and what you do is just take them and just sort of move them around a little bit. They, to be honest with you, getting a little browner than they should be. But you want them nice and crisp on the outside. Oh, I need more than that. I'm never going to make it. Anyway, get them brown on the outside. Just keep moving them around until you get them all brown on the outside. In a couple of minutes, then what we'll do is we'll put some. Uh, we'll put some. Uh, what? What will we put in there? Come on, Larry. Beef consomme. It's going to go in there in a couple of minutes. And a little sherry. But aren't they pretty? They're looking real pretty. Mm -hmm. On the outside. And that's all we're going to do for just just right now. And now I'm putting um, in, I'm going to dice it up for some of this delicious pickled herring. Ooh, mmm, mmm, mmm. I can just see the staff salivating all over the place. Wishing they was at it real soon. One time baby. Oh, I guess the finger lady won't approve of this either. Oh, you yeah, to touch that for. fish with your finger. <laughs> I ruined a good finger. I'm telling. And I'm going to chop this. Uh, what is that? What? It's eight it's minutes. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have this uh, well, guy over here with three fingers on one hand and two on the other. <laughs> oh, how awful. Did it hurt? How did he lose it? I don't know what him? kind of an accident it was. In an industrial accident. And it accident. makes it a little tough to figure out what he's saying. And all right. I got this uh, pickled herring with uh, onions, so I'm going to chop up some of these uh, pickled onions and put in here just for fun, too. But oh boy, this looks so good. So does this, but mm -hmm. I just know we're going to be eating it raw. Oh, and it tastes wonderful too. I just sampled some. Now, now that we've got this brown, I got to go back to the stuff a little bit. Now that we've got this stuff brown, all right? Next thing you do is you add a couple of cups of beef consomme. Just go ahead and I'm not going to add an awful lot because I, I don't have a lot of time here. I've got to rush this thing along. And uh, uh, what you do is you simmer in that stock covered for 15 minutes, or you can simmer it uncovered 15 minutes. I don't have 15 minutes. I'm going to put it on high and try and do it real fast and I hope and pray that it gets done and wish that we had a microwave on the set. Now, after that's done, you'll take those out of there and you'll add a little bit of flour to it, a couple of tablespoons full of flour, mix it around and make a nice gravy. And then you can add a little sherry to that if you want to. Mm -hmm. and, and then put it back in and serve it in the gravy. All right? And take it out, put it in a nice, beautiful bowl or one of those chafing dishes, heat it up, and everyone will just go oh, gaga, the da da.
So anyway, I'm going to cut these things in half and hope. Well, I think they'll get done. Oh, I think they're, they're doing, doing fine. pretty good mm -hmm. in there. I might even have a little time to make the gravy if I behave myself. Yeah, ground <coughs> ground meat cooks real fast, so you don't really have any yeah. big problems. In fact, I think I might even go, well, no, I'll wait just a couple of minutes before I put my sherry but I'm in. Still, I've got some sherry along here, Ooh, right? good. Now, I'm still dicing my fish. And you need really a whole pickled herring, so because this is a lot of this, this herring and onion. And now, let's see, I've got... Uh, to put in a little oil. This is going to be, oh, I don't know, a couple tablespoons of oil, maybe a little bit more. And, oh, how much is that? A couple of tablespoons of vinegar to moisten with, and let me stir it up. Oh, boy, doesn't this look good? Woo wee! I can hear them in the back. I can hear the engineers choking. What are they choking on? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Probably an old tape reel or something. Are we close to being able to show these people what's in this stuff? Uh huh. Yeah, I have a. <clears throat> I have to garnish this. Yeah, let's see. Swedish meatballs. There you go. There's what it's in it. I'm adding uh, some of this uh, flour to the stock right now, okay. and it's thickening up. It's not the best way in the world to make it, but who cares? There it is, the Swedish meatballs, two so slices of bread, soaked in milk, a half pound of ground beef, a half pound of ground veal, a half pound of ground pork, a little bit of uh, two eggs, uh, lots of other things, uh, margarine, onions, mix it all up with chopped parsley, a little bit of salt, a little paprika, grated lemon rind, teaspoon of lemon juice, teaspoon of Worcestershire, a little flour to make your sauce, two cups of beef consomme, a little sherry, and I'm getting ready to add just a little bit of sherry to it right now. And there you go, Swedish meatballs. And for the Swedish salad, you've got a <clears throat> four ounces of cold roast beef, uh, a pickled herring, a quarter pound of potatoes, cooking apples, pickle beets, tablespoons of pickle and capers, chopped chervil and tarragon, oil and vinegar, hard boiled egg, and even some anchovy fillets. Yay, we're all so thrilled. Uh, to garnish with, and if you've got lots of money, you can have some beautiful oysters on this, but we didn't go that far this year. Uh -huh. Let me open up my anchovies. Oh, I can't wait. I'm just all squishy about the prospect of putting these anchovies on here. Boy, this is getting real thick, real pretty, real nice, real soon. Miss Witch! Oh, Miss Witch! She, oh, there she is. She just did a flyby. Mm. Here she is again. Come here. Oh, look, she's jumping around. Must have been something she ate. Dear boys, <clears throat> here we are in jolly old England. Oh, boy. We love the beef eaters, the men and the gin. <laughs> His sister <laughs> wanted to see if she could make one flinch when she went up to him. Uh huh. He didn't flinch. He just fainted. <laughs> see you soon. <laughs> and they sent in some typical English recipes. Mm-mm-mm. We can't wait. Well, look at this. This has oh, gotten they've done it. real thick Aren't and they real bubbly. Pretty? They really are. They're real thick and real bubbly. See, that's a real thick syrupy stuff. And that's got lots of uh, sherry in it. And the only thing bad about it, it is not as smooth as I usually make it. I usually sift that stuff in. You can see there's some little pieces of uh, oh boy, oh boy, stuff oh in there. Boy. But I think it's done, and I think it's going to be OK. Right, and it well, smells good. It, it does. smells real good with all that sherry in there. Ooh, wonderful. One, oh, I got to bring a. I gotta bring something to set it on because it's real hot. Well, I never thought I'd live to see this. And now I don't think I'll ever live to eat it. <laughs> but anyway, well, let me give you one of these fine Swedish meatballs. Mm. Ooh, that's made a nice, thick, goopy syrup. Now, what you would do, of course, is you would not be so gauche as I am doing right now and serve this in the pan that you made it in. Oh, no, how gross. Icky poo. We would be putting this in a fine chafing dish with this wonderful, wonderful thick goop mm -hmm. that I made up mm -hmm. from sherry sauce and what have you. With the oh, they're cooked through to a turn. Oh, are they really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get a little piece of herring here along with the 
Yeah. Oh, a wonderful flavor. That was a little piece of anchovy made. Oh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> An anchovy and herring's disguise. Let me try and see how it is. Do you like it? Yeah. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, Laban. I've tried. <laughs> You mean you don't like this, Larry? This is a delicious salad. Mm -mm -mm. Try it at home, you'll love it, people. Oh, yeah. Well, let me try this. <laughs> well, the Swedish meatballs are light and tender. They're not real leaden, are they? Mm -mm. They're they real are. tasty. They really are. They taste a little like herring. <laughs> Everything else will from now on. We've got to go. Bye. <laughs> If you're a fan of Cookin' Cheap and would like copies of the recipes, make a $60 pledge of support to Blue Ridge PBS, and we'll say thank you with the new Cookin' Cheap cookbook. This hardcover three-ring binder is chocked full of over 930 recipes that were presented on the show by Laban and Larry. In addition, you'll also receive instructions on how to download a digital copy of the cookbook to use on your favorite device. Pledge for your cookbook now at BlueRidgePBS.org or by calling 866-624-8366. Thank you.